I uh, guess we'll get started, and I'm sure a few other people will uh, join us in the next few minutes. So uh, this lecture is going to be about uh, Tessigy. Uh, we're going to go over a variety of different Tessigy. Now, what uh, a lot of Tessigy books and a lot of Tessigy lectures go over is... Uh, Yes, yeah, they're, they're uploaded. I'm a few behind, actually. I need to upload about uh, two recent ones that I've done. But, uh, yes, I do. Um, I, I usually post them in uh, the SGK room. Anyway, so uh, in this lecture, we're going to start out with a few of the more basic test G that are uh, very important. Um, they're ones that are, aren't particularly uh, fancy or showy, but uh, they will appear again and again and again in your games once you start to look for them. And uh, knowing them, you can uh, greatly improve your chances at uh, using them in a game. You know, a lot of the fancier Tessigees, I mean, they might look really cool once uh, you learn them, but uh, the fact of the matter is they're usually pretty obscure situations, and uh, they just don't occur that often. And while the one time you get to play it out of every 10,000 games might be awesome, it, on a day-to-day -day basis, just uh, isn't that useful to know at least until you reach a certain point in skill. <laughs> so uh, we're going to start out looking at some of the more basic test G, and then as we move on, I've tried to do it so that uh, they get uh, harder as we go. And then uh, the last four are uh, particularly difficult. Most of the last four are uh, down level test G problems. But uh, so this is a, and also, I should also go over uh, the rules for answering um, when I show up a new problem, don't just uh, yell out the first move that uh, occurs to you. I know that's really, really, really tempting. Don't get me wrong. But uh, it's just uh, not really the best strategy to study and uh, try and learn test So when you actually say you have the answer and then you, you say the answer, I'm going to ask, you know, well, what if, uh, what, what if the other player plays here? What if he plays there? And you're going to need to know not only the first move, but you need to know all the follow-up moves and how your opponent's going to respond and then how you're going to respond to that. So don't don't say anything until you are sure that uh, you know that it's the right answer because if you get it wrong, I am going to uh, have you do virtual push-ups. Um, I don't really know what virtual push-ups are, but uh, you'll just have to figure something out and do them. <laughs> I know, right? It's horrible. Okay, so uh, that being said, so this is a somewhat basic uh, test G problem. Yes, yes, yes. A virtual push-up is too ago. Hey, hey, you know, in uh, in China, when uh, at some of their uh, go schools, what they do is uh, they'll actually have a... Uh, you don't get dinner sometimes if you miss your life and death problems for the day. And, you know, you'd be amazed, apparently, how uh, motivating it is to get your life and death right when uh, your dinner relies on it. It's fantastic motivation to get stronger. But uh, that being said, okay. So what we are looking for here is uh, black to play naturally. And uh, the question is uh, the Tessigy. Yes, or, or lose weight. Yeah, the, the Tessigy here. And I, I would ask our Don players to uh, not answer these first few, especially because I have no doubt that, uh, the Don players and probably the top Qs in the room are well aware of uh, the best move without uh, really too much effort for these. <laughs> well, that's my assumption. Don't, don't shake it from me. So... You've all taken a good long while to uh, take a look at this. Does anyone have any ideas for what the right answer is on threat of virtual push-ups, if you get it wrong? Don't answer until you you think you're sure. And this isn't a particularly uh, crazy test of G. This is just a, a pretty basic one. It's, there's no fancy things. Ah. Anyone want to take a shot? Or have I scared you all away with my threat of virtual push-ups? <laughs> ah, E2. Good choice. Yes. So E2 is a, a, always a good move to look at when you see three stones like this that already have a Hane on them on both sides. This is uh, something along the lines of the vital point, but uh, the question you have to answer is, uh, what do you do? If white goes here, black to play. <laughs> oh, do you? <laughs> ah, should you cut immediately? Have you read that out? 
Panic, yes. Panic is a, a very solid strategy. I, I can't argue. Yeah? Start that panicking. So you think, uh, what, D3 immediately? Is this the answer? Does white have uh, no counter to this? So yeah, don't, don't say it unless uh, you know what to do. Well, D2 actually isn't the best way to kill. Um, best way to kill is F2. Because white's going to win this fight. Because, yeah, white's going to win this fight. And uh, that's pretty good for white. Or at least acceptable for white. But there's something much better that uh, black can do. Any ideas? Ah, so you're absolutely sure that the Descendant Sente is uh, the move? Or is there... We've already played this E2 stone, and it seems like a good move, but uh, we want to do something to make sure that it, uh, it remains safe. Ah, so F2 is a, F2 is a pretty vicious move. Um... Sometimes you could consider F2, but you really don't need to play F2. Uh, yeah, G2 is actually uh, the move here. Because if uh, white tries something fancy to slice black, he can't. Because he has this whole threat of uh, black coming in and playing uh, D3. So at the end of the day, white still has to come back and fix. And that gives black the opportunity to play this move. Yeah, snapback sucks. So actually what white has to do here is white has to just come back and defend. And then uh, black can do this. And white uh, is uh, not particularly alive. So not exactly a, a happy day for white. But, uh, you know, the most common move there, the most common move that I see, if black did g3, What, you mean like this? Or just playing g3 straight up? Well, I guess white would still need to descend. Something like this, I would imagine, is what would happen. Which isn't a terrible result for black, but it's not as good as it could be. I mean, uh, white's still alive inside. So yeah, not a terrible result, but we're looking for best result. Now the other common move that might occur is a move like f3, which looks like it's pretty good. But uh, the problem is white can just respond uh, with a pretty basic defending move at uh, e2. And uh, black doesn't really get what he wants. If black decides to press in, he still has this cut at g3 to worry about, and white still lives. So this isn't good enough for black. So e2 is really the vital point to uh, test g in here that we need to find. All right, let's uh, take a look at another one. Ah, this is a good one. So this one's a little bit trickier. This is more, uh, the, the technique here is uh, once you learn it, it will stick with you because it's just so useful. You find these kinds of situations where your stones are one space apart, and both of them are critically endangered, and you need to save your stones. And the Liberty fight is very close sometimes. And there's a pretty simple move that uh, once you learn it, will stick with you for a long time. But if you've never seen it before, it can be uh, particularly difficult to find in this kind of case. So th this problem is black to play, and uh, black to win this uh, life and death struggle with a test so before anyone yells out an answer, I'd like to uh, make sure that everyone uh, takes some time to read. Reading is, of course, of the utmost when uh, discovering whether a test G is real or whether it's a false one. And I would also ask our uh, Don players once again to uh, refrain from answering, especially at first. But, uh, yeah, you know, when uh, ideally when you reach the Don levels, this is one of those uh, problems that should just snap into your head, uh, or the answers that should snap into your head. Yeah, uh, I suppose you can answer if... Uh, <laughs> if you like. You're kind of close to that one Don mark, though. All 
Ah, so E1 is uh, the simple move that might occur. But uh, E1 is problematic. Um, I, uh, my understanding is that it's not going to turn out very well for black. The problem is white's going to go D1. And now black has a bit of a dilemma. Because black can do this, but uh, black's, gonna, or white, uh, black's going to uh, lose this liberty fight pretty badly. Yes, the magical diagonal. Oh no, it's not Seki. No, no. D1 is straight up kill. D1 is awesome. So this kind of diagonal, this is uh, really, really, really common. When you have uh, two groups that are one space apart, and they're both potentially in danger, threatening to connect under with a diagonal like this changes up the liberty fight by about one liberty usually. Because white needs to come down to disconnect it, of course. And then uh, black can get in a free forcing move. And white has to respond. And then black can steal a liberty. And the critical point here is that white cannot take the E1 liberty. And because white can't take this liberty, black wins the capturing race. So black has basically uh, secretly gained himself a liberty with uh, the D1 stone. And uh, this is a move that will just occur again and again and again in your games, I promise you. So this is a good one. Pretty simple one. Ah, this next one is uh, kind of interesting. Um, this isn't, uh, shouldn't be that difficult, but uh, it's not immediately apparent. So uh, when anyone when anyone has an idea on what the move could be, uh, no, it is not co. I will uh, I will say when uh, the problems are co. But uh, this is not co. This is straight up kill. Ah, good. Yeah, H is a little tricky to find, but uh, once you see it, it's pretty funny. White, of course, can't play this because it's self Atari. And if white plays this, black is more than happy just to kill white. So this goes back to the point, the 2-1 point is, uh, you know, th this probably isn't the most common position. But the Tessigy behind it, the fact that the 2-1 point is a particularly uh, unique Tessigy point on the board. So actually, this is a good question. Why is the 2-1 point so unique? Why does it show up in so many Tessigys? Why is it called, you know, the magical point? Anyone? Why? I is it just... Because so yeah, those are all parts of it. Um, the key with this stone is that yeah, I can make a, a co by itself. Right. So the key to this stone is it is right next to the one one point, and the one one point is the only point on the board where a stone has only two liberties without any other stone near it. And that makes all sorts of insane codes and all sorts of liberty calculations basically go haywire with uh, the 2-1 point. Groups that normally would have an extra liberty don't because of uh, the 2-1 and all sorts of stupid codes which normally would require three or four stones can be made with only two at uh, the 2-1 point. So when you're in a complicated life and death struggle like this, even if you have no idea if the 2-1 point will work, it's always a move just to look at and, and see if it has any potential because it can turn uh, all sorts of life and death problems on their heads. But yeah, this was a, a pretty simple problem. Uh, this next one is interesting, but uh, no Don players answering this one. This also shows another good principle. Um, so this is black to play and win this life and death struggle here. And I want everyone to read before they answer, because the intuitive answer that might first occur to you maybe doesn't work very well. Oh, that was quick. Jeez. <laughs> B1. Yeah, B1 is a really good move. But a uh, better question is, why not C1? Does this work? Yeah, B1 kind of sucks after this. Evil, evil snapback. The 2-1 is magic. Yes. This, uh, once again... <laughs> hey, 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 we're, we're going through uh, the easier ones. We'll get to the Don ones, don't worry. 
So yeah, B1 uh, looks kind of silly at first glance, but it works brilliantly in terms of uh, killing White. White has uh, no way to win this Liberty fight. So that was also pretty simple. Ah, this one is a little more interesting. Okay, so with this problem, rather than anything, uh, rather than any crazy fancy technique, this is just what is uh, the test G that Black needs to do in this area. Oh, someone's answering quickly. <laughs> Maybe I should restrict it to a uh, 3Q and weaker, Edward, though. <laughs> Are you sure it's E2? Yeah, E2 actually, you know, is the right move. So the key here is uh, you want to separate H3, of course. And uh, you can do that all sorts of ways. But E2 is a little bit better because it gives you extra forcing moves. Of course, black can go here. And this does separate him, of course. But uh, after this move, white gets sente. And H3 isn't being, uh, you know, either touched or attacked really by any stone. So uh, this lets uh, this lets you know White play some sort of move to either lightly escape or, or something depending on what's going on on in the uh, lower right to help him save H3. But with a stone like E2, with a stone like E2, if White captures, Black gets this move in Sente, which not only destroys White's shape but uh, gives Black great follow-ups. White still needs to live here. So black can even just do this. So that, that's pretty terrible for white. If white goes this way, now black has a great sacrifice test G, which is just uh, Tari once and twice. And then black can attack H3. And now H3 is basically in a lot of pain. Black has done substantially more damage to it at the cost of only maybe two or three points in uh, the corner. So this kind of test G, you know, it's uh, it's one of those subtle things. It's easy to miss in the heat of a game, but uh, finding these type of little things uh, again and again will really will just strengthen your groups, hurt your opponent's groups, and really help you throughout the entire game. So yeah, we're getting through these pretty quick. I guess we'll get to the uh, more difficult test Gs earlier than I thought. Jeez, you guys just blowing through these. All right, so this one, no down players and no one or two Qs answering this one. Well, this is a position that uh, we would find. All right, so, uh, oh, this one, low. yes, yes, yes. This is an interesting one. Um, if you've seen this one before, don't answer, because uh, once you know it, you kind of, you know, know it. Um, so C3 is one guess, but I did ask for people, you know, who are not one or two cues to, you know, not answer. But, uh, regardless. <laughs> ah, we have uh, another choice for uh, B2. And C3 seem to be uh, the two moves that uh, occur here. So this is one of those test Gs that, uh, if you haven't seen it before, um... It's, uh, what's the word? It, it's just not, you're not going to be able to find it if you haven't seen it before. It's one of those moves. But uh, once you see it, you will uh, really laugh at how fun it is. So black actually has, uh, no, Rukus, you can't. Black actually has a uh, unconditional kill on uh, the corner here, which is really funny. So, oh, and C1. Let's uh, take a look at these three and see what happens. Oh, oh, I marked C2. So I did. So I did. No, um, this is, no, nah, this really isn't really the Tombstone Test G. The Tombstone Test G is a different one. I can show you the Tombstone if you like. Tombstone's a really funny one. Actually, I have a Test G that uh, encompasses the tombstone, or at least a version of the tombstone. But uh, not quite this one. Similar idea, though. So, uh, yeah, I know it's a, it's a nice name, isn't it? Really, really nice test G. Okay, so let's take a look. Start out with, uh, with B2. Um, hmm. 
if white just responds normally, mm, can white win if he responds normally? I think he can. Yeah, it seems like uh, white is okay. Although black can retake two, well, he can't even retake the two stones. But uh, yeah, I don't think B2 works, although it looks interesting. Mm. Ah, C1 is also kind of interesting. I like C1. C1's a, a fascinating move. Hmm. But uh, after white does this move, if black tries to go in and uh, cut, it seems like uh, white can just do this and end up just fine. Mm. Now, B1 doesn't quite work either. B1 looks really interesting, actually. But... Um, at an absolute minimum, uh, white can just do this to uh, immediately win the capturing race. It might be possible for uh, white to win the race like this. I'm not sure. I haven't read this out. Um, yeah, I think white can win like this. No, but I think white can win like this. Yeah, white's fine. And even if you could get the corner, there's a still a better move. The best move here, actually, is uh, the first one suggested, which is uh, c3. Now we're going to see why. At first, c3 doesn't look like that great a move. But uh, the test G is pretty interesting. You actually throw in at uh, b2. And white can capture. But let's see what happens. Black Atarius, white captures, and now black has another Tessiji that he can do. Uh, anyone have any ideas who's not a Don player? There we go. Yep, white can't play C1, of course, because C1 is self Atari. And then all black needs to do is just be nice and simple with E1. And if white goes and makes his eye, black wins. Oh, no, this is a really tricky one to see if you've never seen it before. But uh, once you have it in your head, it's incredibly useful. And, of course, if white attempts to do this, uh, white just dies. Yeah, this isn't really Tombstone. This is, I guess you might call it, uh, a cousin of uh, the Tombstone Tessigy, which we'll go over a bit later. But, uh, so yeah, this is uh, uh, the basic idea. But the shape that we want to be aware of is this one space extension from uh, the stone here. This shape. Uh, a lot of players will play moves like uh, B4, which just don't work as well. The Tessigy at C3 is uh, one of those things that you can't immediately see, but it uh, really ends up hurting White's liberties. It's just a two-stone sacrifice. And then throw in another stone, and white basically runs out of test, uh, runs out of liberties. But uh, another one of those testages that when you're looking for it, it will uh, occur a surprising amount of time in your games. And yeah, there is a Joseki that actually has it. So let's go on to the next one. Ah, okay. So this one's uh, this one's kind of interesting. This is uh, almost a, a life and death problem, I guess. This is as much a life and death problem as it is a testigy problem. But it's uh, black to play and kill. White stones. Now I want uh, everyone to uh, take a minute to actually think before we uh, yell at any answers. Yes, T20 is uh, the only move it could possibly be. So the key here is we want to destroy white's eye shape. But, uh... Oh, 
one guess at uh, D2. Make sure you read, though, before you uh, just give out an answer. We have one for B2, no, Rukas. It's not B2. Anyone else want to take a shot? This one's a little bit harder than uh, some of the other problems. We're uh, moving into slightly harder territory. Rukas did say B2, but uh, B2 is a silly move. D2, maybe. Does anyone else have any ideas? Or are these uh, are A and B our only choices? Ah, we have uh, A3. We have E2. F1. Oh, and for variety, F2. Lots of fun choices. So the key behind finding tesages like this one is uh, just reading. So move like A3, after black plays here, I uh, don't really see how uh, this one's supposed to work. You do? Oh, your idea is to play D2 now? Huh. Guess that's interesting, but I don't think it works. Mm, let's see. Huh. This is an interesting strategy. But uh, if white goes here... Seems like a fair reduction, but uh, white still manages to live. Yeah, it's a it's a cute reduction. I like the idea, but uh, it just manages to squeeze out life. Mm, so yeah, F and E just don't really work. They just go on the outside, and uh, neither of them reduces white enough to uh, allow you to kill white. But uh, so that really leaves us with uh, A, D, and B. B doesn't really work. Um, white just goes here, I think. And I don't really think black has a fantastic response. A, at first glance, A looks like it's really good. But the problem is that this just manages to work for white. Because after black cuts, black has no way of uh, capturing white's two stones. And so white is, uh, in essence, 100% uh, alive here. Now you can reduce with B2, certainly. You can get a reduction off. Oh, B2 before cut? I still think this is the move. Seems like uh, the same result, essentially. White seems okay. Ah, E2, our final choice, yes. E2 is the right move. And uh, the reason why this move is right is that uh, F2 doesn't work. So what does black do if white goes here? Yep. That's exactly the right idea. And suddenly white's in a dilemma. White needs to play two moves now. And he can't play both. And whichever he takes... <laughs> you can answer that, Rukus, it's okay. And now Black has gained himself that extra liberty that he needs to uh, capture the corner here that he couldn't by just playing D2 alone. 
See, this one was a little trickier. Uh, this one is pretty simple. So, uh, like anyone who is, uh, I would say, 4Q or stronger to not answer this question. Yes, undoubtedly you know. For no one 4Q and stronger answer this question, please. This is black to play and get the best result in uh, the corner. Even if you suck at Tessiji. This is a pretty funny one. But uh, it's very useful to know because, uh, once again, this is one of those shapes that uh, will appear again and again. And once you start looking for them, you will uh, suddenly just uh, start finding them in your games. And they will do a lot of good for you. Ah, B3. I see. So you go B3... And what happens, what do you do if uh, white plays b4? Mm, resign, yes. Ah, c2. Perfect. Yep, this is the test of g. Because suddenly, white dies. Really, really, really badly. So in this case, what is the best move that uh, white can play? What's white's best defense? Yeah, d2 is all white has. And then black can do this. And black can even play this. And suddenly black has uh, destroyed white's corner with a simple hon a at b3. Now, had black held himself back and played a much plainer move, like b4, black, or white would have been thrilled to have been able to take b3. And this would be an uh, entirely different endgame in terms of points. But uh, finding moves like these can change the score. 10, 15, 20 points. Is C2 slightly better for white? Ah, good question. Good question. Um, no is the simple answer. The main reason is uh, it's true that white gains slightly, slightly more points this way. Maybe one more point. But uh, the question is a question of uh, Sente versus Gote. And uh, even though white can do this little fanciness, this still ends up leaving a uh, nasty amount of Aji for later. There's uh, all sorts of interesting Aji that black has with D1 to uh, make a ko in the corner later on. So this isn't really good enough for white. And yeah, th this is, this is pretty, uh, a very messy way for white to try and handle it. So D2 is a bit better. But good question. Very good question. All right, so this is the last relatively easy one. And then after this, it'll be opened up for our, uh, Don players to uh, answer. Oh, and that's a blank one. So I guess we'll uh, start with the difficult ones right off the bat. All right, so these get a... <laughs> Not all of these were easy, I guess. But uh, these uh, next ones get uh, substantially tougher, I guess. So uh, Don players, feel free to chip in uh these problems range from about the 1 to 2Q range up to about uh, the 4 Don range. So uh, they're pretty interesting problems. This is a... Uh, okay, so this is as much life and death as it is a Tessiji problem. But uh, even though this is a pretty unusual situation that uh, you're unlikely to find in your games, this particular one, the technique that's behind it is actually one that can be very, very useful. Wow, you found it already? That's that's pretty impressive. This one took me a good uh, 15 seconds to find. So I, I should say the, 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 the answer here is either uh, is to kill those four stones on the top. You can't actually kill the shape but uh, if, if white plays properly, but uh, to cut off the four stones here is the objective. Ah, uh, your sequence is D3, C3, C4, E... Why not just this? White seems fine. Alright, let's uh, take some time and read and think before we yell out answers. This is, uh, this is not an easy problem. Uh, you should uh, not be surprised if you have... Uh, fair amount of trouble finding the answer to it.
I want uh, the whole sequence, Rukus. Give me a whole sequence. What do you see after happen happening after A2? Yeah, just yelling out a first move is uh, something anyone with a keyboard can do. But finding the right sequence is uh, substantially different. But we have uh, one suggestion as a starting move for A2. Ah, we have one sequence. Let's see. B3, A2, D3, C3, B1, and then C1. <laughs> Looks cool. Almost works. Not quite, though. <laughs> no, this problem is actually really interesting. Ah, throw in an A2 somewhere. Well, I did kind of emphasize how cool the 2-1 point is, so that would not be surprising if it's somewhere in there. But it's a good starting point that you can see that A2 has some sort of effect on the problem. But moving from the point where you see, okay, A2 does something, to finding the exact sequence where A2 becomes a tessigy is uh, very different. D3, let's see, we have D3, C3, A2, A1, C1, but then white seems fine. That was uh, almost. <laughs> Don't worry, this is uh, this is a tricky one. So I will give you a hint that A2 has something to do with it, but you have to find out what to do with A2 and how to use it to uh, cut off those four stones, or if white plays wrong, kill the group. That in and of itself should be a hint, I mean. Oh, so we have... C3, A2, like this. No, white seems fine. I don't want to have to give you guys the answer to this one. We have a whole team working on this. Feel free to talk with one another. This is a, this is a tricky one. This is a one or two down level problem. Yeah, you guys owe me like 50 virtual push-ups each by now. Especially you, Isra. Let's see, B1, C1, B3. Mm, white seems okay. Ah, yeah, FC doesn't, you don't owe me any push-ups yet. That's nice. So, yeah, figure out what a virtual push-up is and then figure out how to do one because I haven't really gotten that far. Oops. <laughs> Read. Yeah, I know it's, it's, a, it's a difficult thought, but uh, if you really spend some time, you know, a basic rule of thumb for testing problems or life and death is a five-minute rule. If you can't solve the problem in five minutes yourself, then it's probably too difficult for you. But you should spend... You know, you, you should really try for up to five minutes before looking at the answer. That'll let you read out as much as you can. Ah, we have a new sequence. Okay, let's see. A2. A1. Ah, B3. Someone found something interesting. A2. C1. What an interesting sequence. My God, I think you've killed it. But let me ask you. What if, in response to your original move... What if white does this? Ah, 
there's Rukus for the kill. Well, almost the kill. That basically works, though. Yeah, White still has this move. But uh, suddenly, White's liberties are uh, not exactly thrilled to be in this kind of situation. Nevertheless, Black can't kill the stones. White can just manage to squeeze himself out. But maybe you're on to something. Maybe. Oh, what if you play d3 first? Ah, suddenly it gets more interesting. If white plays c3 now, suddenly white is dead. There's not even a ko. This isn't a real ko. Because black just falls back, but excellent job, Liptus. Excellent. This was a very difficult problem. Yep. So A2 was the key point, and the reason why, yeah, <laughs> beating, shaming all the dons here. <laughs> so the key point was that A2 ended up stealing a lot of white's eye space, and it was able to do so because of the unique liberty situations that uh, revolve around the 2-1 point. Once again, a kind of obscure situation that uh, the 2-1 does magical things with. <laughs> That's the easy answer, okay. Okay, Rukus. So this was a good. This is a good warm up. Let's uh, go to the next one. Ah, this is a classic Tessaji, but uh, also one of those that if you've seen it before, it's not that hard to find. But if you've never seen it before, then uh, it's pretty hard to find. So this is white to play, and white to do something with his four stones. White seems in trouble, but white has a really, really useful Tessaji to squeeze himself out of danger. No, Rukus, I think you've seen this one before. Yeah, only two liberties. Ah, that's actually a really good point. Yeah, if, your group, if you're looking at a Tessaji problem and your group only has two liberties, then clearly everything has to be, or generally everything has to be some sort of Atari, lest uh, your opponent just kill your stones. Ah, uh, is it a co? You tell me, is the best that can happen a co? Mm, A2 looks good. <laughs> FZ, you're being so cautious. It's a good strategy. I, I approve. You're being very cautious. A2 looks good, but uh, yeah, the problem is A4. Black doesn't need to respond because he can just kill white stones. Or I should say, he doesn't need to defend at C2, because he can just kill the stones. Oh, there's a way to save them. Now, it might be a co, maybe, but uh, you can save them. And this is a really cool saving technique that, once again, will show up in many of your games. Ah, that's a good... Let's see, C2, D2... A2. That looks good, but it doesn't quite work, because black does B1 rather than C1, and suddenly white's group dies. Ah, there you go. Yes. Once again, the two one-point strikes. So, uh, if black captures, what can white do? Yep. White can play a2. And now we have a big old ko on our hands. And after black takes this move, white makes it a really large ko, which is really good for white considering his group is almost dead. But what if black tries to counterattack? What if black does a2 to try and resist? Now white to play? Yeah, now it's d1 ko. It's still ko with a really nifty move at uh, d1. So this is another one of those tessages that's not immediately apparent, but uh, once you start looking for it, it will uh, keep showing itself to you in uh, your games. I can't tell you how many times I've made this in my games, and it just makes players uh, bang their head. All right, let's uh, go on to the next one. Oh, is this way better for black than the other way? Um, mm, 
No. I think uh, I think I like the other way for black more. Black has uh, a little better local threats the other way. So this is a good one. Uh, this is actually not that difficult a question. I don't know why I put this one in here, but uh, this is a, a good one to show. So it's uh, Black's turn, and Black plays A2, and the question is white to kill. A5. Really? A5 kills? I don't think A5 kills. Black Black seems fine, I think. Alright, that's uh that that's ten virtual push-ups for UFC. Just because. <laughs> oh, someone found the sequence. Wow Rukas, you must really practice these. Yeah, that's uh that's a good technique. So it looks like this is a, a stupid move. But uh after black captures Suddenly, white has a really basic test G. At, well, when you know it, B1. And uh, black has to keep his eye. And now he only has one eye. And so this is actually not that difficult a one. But uh, this is a technique that all, you know, we get into the situation where uh, we capture one stone like this. And our stones get pressured into a two stone Atari like this countless times in our games. And uh, every now and again... Playing B1 can actually result in uh, the group dying, even though you're, ending, you're, you're giving black more stones. So yeah, good one to know. Ah, uh, this one. Okay, this is probably the hardest one we've done so far. This is actually a Yose endgame testogy. If uh, you can answer this question, you are probably uh, about a 4 Don, or maybe a 5 Don. AGA 5 Don. You're, you're, you're about my strength if uh, you can answer this within a minute or two, at least in your testogy finding. Because this one took me some time to uh, try and find the best solution for. So, uh, you know, testogies are a constant in... It's Black's turn. Black's turn, yes. And testogies are a constant in uh, endgame. Being able to find uh, these endgame testogies can drastically, drastically shift the score. So naturally, white has groups on two sides. So the obvious idea is, hmm, you know, how should how, how can I do something which will do maximum damage to either one or both of the sides? And finding that exact sequence is not easy at all in this case. So yeah, the intuitive choice that comes to mind is, well, geez, I should just O18 and then monkey jump. And then white can defend here. And then monkey jump. And certainly this isn't a bad variant. You know, I'll never say that this is horrible for black at all. Because black gets sente and gets to reduce white. However, this is not the best variant. Believe it or not. This looks good, but this is actually second best. This is the plain move. There's actually a much fancier move that uh, gets you a better result. But is not easy at all to find. Oh, first move, L18, huh? I see. So you go L18, and then white does this. And what, what's the sequence that you saw, which is uh, which is better? Oh, N18? I mean, I guess that's okay. But this doesn't seem that good. I mean, you know, it's not terrible, but I think the monkey jump stole more points away than this. Now, this one's a hard one to find. I might have to tell you guys this one. S17 looks suspicious. L18, L17, O18. Um, no, that seems fine. K18. Uh... Huh. Um, why not just do this? White seems fine, and uh, black seems in a fair amount of danger. Ooh, you got it? Are you going to go redeem yourself? Let's see. Ah, 
I'll give you a hint. Oh, wait. L17, 18, M18, N18, M19, O18? That doesn't really work. Although, maybe you're onto something. I wonder, is there something Black can do here that's valuable? Maybe he's onto something. Mm, K18 doesn't really work. But maybe I'm trying to make a hint here that maybe this is something that you can continue with and get a good result with. Not that I'm being too obvious with my hints. O18. Oh, we have, let's see, we have N19, M19, O18, O19, P19. Mm, I mean, that's not a terrible result, but I don't think it's as good as the monkey jump. White seems fine. Ah, wait, we have another sequence. We have O18, M19, O19, N19. Ah, perfect, FC, you have redeemed yourself. This is the perfect test G. Suddenly, rather than a monkey jump, because we have O19 supporting us, R18 becomes possible. So this is uh, no push-ups for you. This is uh, not an easy move to find. You should not be expected to be able to find moves like this until you reach uh, low to mid-down levels at the very least. But uh, the idea here is that you forced on the left to give yourself O8, O19 in Sente, which has allowed you to take R18 rather than R19. And uh, to do this, you've used the remaining Aji from uh, your two stones here. It's, uh, it's a testigy that involves basically a quarter of the board. But uh, no, it's, a, it's a good one to be able to find. If you can start finding moves like these in your games, your endgame will uh, improve spectacularly. Uh, yeah, white, white, white seems uh, fairly dead to me. Um, that's a good question, actually. Is white dead? I don't think white's alive. Don't think white is alive. Yeah, new Tsumego. Huh. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's, uh... Well? Mm. Uh... I don't think it's alive, though. Well, maybe it co-forms. I don't know. It might be a co. It's possible. But uh, we're not going to focus on the Tsumego for now. We could spend a few more minutes on this, but I want to get to the last few problems. This is interesting, though. Is there a way to kill this? I'm not entirely sure. Don't know for sure. Good question. Oh, wait, wait. Maybe you got this. Huh? Aha! There we go. I didn't think that group could live. That's some fun life and death. But uh, I, I digress. Let's uh, let's go on to the last few test problems. Okay. So this is uh, something to do with an invasion. This is basically the invasion test G, and I see people dying here all the time when they shouldn't be dying. So one common invasion technique here is, well, actually that's a good question. What is a viable invasion technique against the uh, upper right? Yeah, Q17 is the usual move. Q18 is sometimes possible, but uh, Q17 is usually easier to make live when uh, white has a low stone. And yeah, there's P18 as well, so th there's lots of techniques. But uh, Q17 is uh, one of the most common. And then white goes here. And when black wants to emphasize the right side, he plays P18. And then white can go here. And black responds. 
and the white goes here. And again and again and again, I see players die as black. And black shouldn't die here. Black is fine. The question is, how do you make black fine here? Now, this is a good one to look at, though. Make black fine. Black to play. There's a really, really useful test G. And yes, Rukus, even you can answer. So let's see, we have S17 and R16 as our two candidates. Let's find out. Oh, but you're not reading. <laughs> Didn't I say you should read? <laughs> so, uh, well, let's take a look first. What if we do the basic move? What if black just does really, really basic move? And he goes in here like this. Well, the problem with doing this is that black dies. So black can't play the base. <clears throat> black can't play the basic way. Uh, K seven K seventeen is important here. It uh, ensures that uh, the cutting points don't make anything. Well, we'll assume the white has the letters. Anyway, the move that we're looking at is uh, S seventeen which is a really good move to be able to find. Now, of course, if white plays a defensive move like S16, black is, of course, more than happy to uh, basically live without uh, any issues at all. And uh, black lives nicely. No problems. But if white decides to be a little more aggressive, now we have a bit of a situation. And so a question I have to ask is, well, black to play? Only one move. Ah, what is that only one move? <laughs> yeah, R16. And what follows here is a pretty one-way sequence. Uh, if white wants to keep his corners, he will uh, start out Atariing here. And then get another Atari. And then to keep his corner, he has to play S18 here. And then finish it off with O18. And it's true that uh, white can technically take back his corner here, to an extent. But uh, black isn't too horrified, because black has a minor Tessiji, at uh, R13, which is really useful, and allows Black to uh, ensure that his uh, group is basically all right. And Black has essentially taken half the corner from White, which is perfectly acceptable for Black. Uh, a small question, but uh, good to know. Uh, black to play if White decides to do S14? Small tessigy, but uh, nevertheless important. Oh, should we cut? Are you sure? Really? Have you read? <laughs> Didn't I say make sure to read first? <laughs> yeah, don't just yell out the answer that comes to instinct. Because this doesn't work. Black is uh, really kind of screwed here. So yeah, you have to do S13 first. And now obviously white cannot play uh, T14. So white has to pull back, and black gets to play out here. And black's basically happy with this result. He already has one eye, and uh, the second eye won't be that much of a problem, and black has essentially, uh, you know, eaten up a chunk of white's corner. Well, locally, yeah. But uh, we have to remember that white started out with three stones in this position, and black started out with one. And uh, when you're in that kind of position... Well, it, it depends on, uh, you know, first of all, where you're starting off. This position started off as being owned by white. White controlled the uh, entire upper right quadrant of the board with three moves. 
and black came in with an invasion of one versus three, and managed to make from that, uh, you know, chopping out half the corner, and managing to escape from that. So while if you look at it locally and say, well, look, white has more points locally, well, yeah, he does. But, uh, you know, you, when you're starting out uh, one versus three, you can't expect to get uh, as many points. Was P18 a viable first move for black? Um, slightly off topic, but uh, good question nevertheless. Yes. In some situations, P18 can be very good. Uh, the idea behind p18 is when your opponent defends the corner, black just plays very simply and extends, or potentially uh, wedges at q17, which is uh, a whole nother lecture, and then extends two spaces like this. And usually this is best when black has stones that are strong uh, around here. This is That's when this is uh, ideal to do, because black's group isn't 100% alive yet. And if white has support in the upper left, black could potentially be attacked pretty hard. And then, yeah, there's a lot of fanciness that uh, can occur like this. But uh, we're, let's uh, go on with some of the test issues that we have at the end. It's kind of uh, off focus. Ah, this one is a very difficult problem. Um, this is another uh, maybe uh, three down, four down level problem. This took me a few minutes to get when I first saw it in uh, my life and my uh, testogy slash life and death book. But uh, this is definitely a testogy, and uh, Black has to play it right now, or he will not get the best result in this uh, critical life and death struggle. So at first glance, it looks like Black is uh, being disadvantaged because it's six liberties versus five. And so even though it's Black's turn, if something normal happens, if they have a, a normal Liberty fight, uh, Black's going to lose. So Black needs to do something to uh, mess with the odds. Ah, S19. Now, are you just saying that on instinct? Or have you uh, read it out? Well, that was, that was very good. Yeah, you, you just got it. Congratulations. It's uh, impressive life and death skills. Yep, so that forces white to play here, which lets black do a throw-in. And then black gets to play uh, M19. And this makes it so that uh, white can't possibly win the liberty fight because white has no eye and black has an eye. And once again, the 2-1 point shows its magic. Actually, a harder question is, how does white punish black if black starts off with the obvious move at uh, P19? Uh, How does white punish such a move? <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? Yes, it's S19. Don't do R19. Um, definitely don't do R19 because then black lives. Yeah, S19 is uh, the trick, because then black can go here, and white goes here, black, white, black, and we have a co on our hands. And white is much, much, much happier to uh, take a co than take pure death. So once again, the uh, 2 one point has uh, shown us its magic powers. Sorry, that leaves us with our uh, final two problems. Two of the. Oh, wait, did I. Oh, no, three problems. My mistake. Three problems. So, this is a really good one, actually. So, this is uh, Joseki that I hope most of the people in the room are familiar with. It's, I might even call it the number one most common Joseki on all of KGS right now. I, I hope that's humor, ideally. Okay, okay, maybe they're more popular Joseki. I don't know. But uh, anyway, this is a pretty popular one. And sometimes R9 is at R10, and sometimes it's a Q10. And, you know, we, we can uh, debate the, the merits of those little moves. Those aren't really important for this question. The main question is, a very common move that happens as a follow-up to this is black 0-13, especially when black wants to build some sort of moyo. 
on uh, the right side. And so for the, this is a two-part question. Uh, the first question is, how should White reply? If he's going to reply locally, what should White do about this move? Yeah, first question is, white to play. Yeah, this isn't really a testigy, more like counter testigy. This is uh, working to stop black's testigy. Wait, empty triangle? Um, I don't know if I've ever seen the empty triangle done here. I suppose it's possible. It could be a move that's been done. But uh, it's not the most common move. Anyone else want to uh, hazard a guess as to uh, what white should do? N16. M15. M14. Good variety of moves. Alright, let's uh, take a look at each of them. So, uh, N16 feels a little bit too nice. Um, if black just wants to play really, really, really simple, uh, black can even just reply here. And uh, white can get this, but uh, black is usually fairly satisfied uh, moving all around white like this. So this uh, might not be good enough for white. Or if black wants to be more severe, he can just stand up straight out. And uh, if white attempts to... Uh, empty triangle his way out, uh, black can essentially uh, challenge him to a very complicated fight to try and seal him inside, which can get pretty uh, interesting. But uh, it's a little too defensive. Ah, yeah. So, uh, ah, so M14 looks like the intuitive move, but uh, the problem is the shape here. Uh, the shape here has a uh, critical problem with uh, white doing this. What's uh, what's black's counter? Anyone know? Uh, M15 isn't horrible, but uh, white seems fine after he goes here, and I think white's okay. Ah, O16, okay. And then if white goes here, black to play. Extend, I see. In 15. I think white's all right. Yeah, that's a pretty difficult fight to try and win. Ah, there you go. N15, 017, N14. Yep, this is the sequence I was uh, looking for. Uh, white is uh, not particularly thrilled with uh, this turn of events. And uh, black is fine. Black can fight it out with uh, the M14 stone if he likes. So yeah, this is, uh, I guess we could say, uh, not good enough for uh, white. Um, so actually, yeah, the most common answer is at uh, M15 to stop any of the testages that uh, black has. This is uh, the more common sequence. And then all sorts of moves are possible here, depending on what uh, black's intentions are. If uh, black just pulls back, white can just pull back, and then black can pull up, and then they can uh, continue on their fighting. But uh, that was just part one. So part two, and part two is a little bit trickier, is let's say... 
that he doesn't respond. Let's say that white decides that he's going to play a1. And now uh, black has to decide how to best take advantage of the fact that uh, white has done nothing about that move. How should he do that? Cut like a beast, I see. So after the, the beast-like cut, and white Ataris, and black to play? N14. Ah, I see. So, uh, this isn't a terrible result, I suppose, for black. Actually, it's not bad. This is not a bad result for black. But uh, it's not maybe the perfect result for black. This is very good for black, but there's actually one that's a little bit better than this. This maybe gets 8 out of 10 points. The real test of G is uh, pretty hard to find. Uh, okay, extend. Mm hmm. And now, uh, yeah, mm. just uh, yell at a random move and hope it's right. Mm, P18 looks nice, but it uh, doesn't work. O eighteen. Oh, another descent, huh? I see. So you're going on uh, the ladders. Um. Hmm. Well, if the ladders work, I suppose you could play this way. You might be able to, assuming you have ladders. This is possible. But uh, I guess my fear is that what if uh, what if uh, white just does say this move? Can black win the internal liberty fight? Seems a difficult task for uh, black to manage, and also unnecessarily messy. I mean, this is uh, very complicated, and black is running out of liberties. And, I mean, yeah, you can try messing around with M18, and maybe, you know, after uh, you do this, I don't know, maybe something is possible. But, uh, and I, I, you can't kill the corner. The corner doesn't die that easily. Maybe you can do this, but uh, this is not ideal. I mean, white can manage to get himself out, live in the corner, black is still not happy. There's a, better, there's a cleaner way to do it, I guess, is the way to say it. Yeah, there's a much cleaner way to play than uh, something incredibly messy uh, like that. It's actually really uh, interesting. It's actually really cool once you see it, but uh, hard to see it first. Uh, N15. Okay. Now what? Uh, Now, M15 doesn't really work well. Ah, M17. That is an interesting move. Now, suddenly something interesting happens. If white captures the one stone, this is uh, problematic for white. Now, if white works hard, white can actually manage to squeeze out life with a living Tessigy at uh, S18. And white can just manage to live. But uh, it doesn't really end well for white's top group here. So this is a very favorable result for black. White, there's no way that uh, white can suffer through this. So what happens if uh, white descends? What is black though? Mm, 
No craziness here, yeah, just simplicity. And white has no choice but to capture the two stones. And now it is black though. Yep. Fail net. I like that. That works. Yeah, if white tries to weaken the net, it doesn't really work that well for white. Because black ends up turning him into a massive dumpling. And then fixing his cutting point. And now black's wall is gigantic. Has no cutting points. And white looks like a gigantic dumpling in the corner. So yeah, this is... Uh, not good for white at all. Uh, the moral of the story is uh, when black plays uh, 013 at the start, you really, really, really need to respond as white. It is entirely unacceptable to Tanuki here as white. I mean, unless it's like a co threat and the co is just game endingly large, it, th th there's almost no move that you could play that is. Uh, equal to getting that kind of perfect thickness all around. So you really should play uh, M15 in response. But uh, yeah, good uh, fun little test. Let's go on to uh, the last two. Ah, this is one of my favorites of all time, and I'm sure many of you have seen this one before. So, black plays in at uh, N17. I have a lot of favorites. And white attacks it at L17. And preferably someone who doesn't already know the test G here for a fact, because once you've learned this one, it kind of sticks with you. But uh, now it's uh, black to play. <laughs> yeah, I know how this position arose too. It's kind of sad and scary. But, uh, okay, scariness aside, keep those booming, and uh, let's think what to do is black. Black has this single stone in the middle of white's territory. Well, you, I mean, yeah, maybe you could try and run, but uh, that seems kind of suicidal to do. And we're assuming we're playing locally, so no tanuki allowed. Ah, Q18, okay. Okay, and now what? P15, huh? Ah, oh, that's an interesting idea. But, uh, what if white goes here? O15, and then I suppose here? Q19? I see. So your idea is to essentially do this in an attempt to kill white. It's an interesting idea, but uh, I think white can just do this here and uh, just break it all open. Uh, ah, you're going to do it that way, but if we do it this way, I don't know how well it works. I think uh, black has too many cutting points to manage this. Me thinks black is in uh, substantial trouble. So, good idea, but uh, not quite. There is some weakness there, but not uh, properly utilized. Ah, there we go, the other one, P17, okay. So let's say white does this move. Yep, P15 is the move. And white dies a horrible, horrible, horrible death. White is a tombstone. Although this wasn't really the tombstone test G. It was another close cousin. But let's say white decides to respond a little more aggressively. What if uh, white responds here? Black to play? P15. 
Ah, looks tempting. But when we get to this point, suddenly black is in a bind. Yeah, looks cool, but not quite. So has this stumped it, or is there another move maybe? Ah, O18. Yep, this is uh, the technique. Because even though white can technically make a ko, this is not a pleasant ko the white wants to be fighting. If black ends up capturing O17, those five stones are an Atari. So uh, this is not a ko that uh, white can really fight. Ah, another good question. Why not Atari the other way? Which Atari the other way? P19 at O16. Mmm, I see. But uh, I think uh, White will just do this move. And I think Black is still in a good chunk of danger. I mean, maybe Black can, you know, try and run like this, but there's no way this could be good enough for Black. Absolutely not. So yeah, it has to be P19. But here's a tricky question. What if White responds here to uh, attempt to stop black. If black responds normally, white's just going to capture the one stone, and black looks stupid. So how does black stop that result? Uh, O18 to the rescue once again. So if white plays O17, it just reverts to the same result. So what if white decides to try and resist? White tries to resist with uh, P19. What does black do about it? There you go. O16. And suddenly we have a really, really, really big co that uh, suddenly appears. And since this area was whites to begin with, uh, co is pretty favorable. So that's uh, more than enough for black. But yeah, this kind of situation appears surprisingly often. Uh, you have uh, three stones like this that are uh, in this kind of position on uh, defending the corner. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's a lot of potential to uh, abuse white's position. All right, last problem of the night. This is actually a really good one, because I see a lot of players uh, make mistakes with this kind of position. Oh yeah, and white has a stone. Oops. White has a stone here. Oops. Why is the white stone not appearing? I demand white put a stone. All right, it keeps changing my variance. So we're going to imagine the white is a stone at R14, even though it's not that important. That's part of the Joseki. So white plays N17. And the question is, first of all, is N17 a good move? Obviously not. <laughs> That's good context. <laughs> yes, yes, your, your analytical skills are very strong. So kudos to you. Yes, this is, this is not correct. What is correct? If that's not right, the uh, first question is, what should white play here? No, N18 is not good. Yep, yeah, P17 is uh, just fine. No, pure and simple. No reason to be all complicated. Just uh, good old P17 is uh, just fine. And then if black wants, he can uh, continue on like this. And like this. And black can uh, make himself a modestly thicker wall. And they can end it like this, which is a pretty standard variant. But a lot of times what I see players do, especially uh, many Q players and even many Don players, is they will play N17 thinking, ha 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 ha, ha ha ha, I'm stealing more corner, ha ha ha. And uh, that's a terrible way to play. 
because it has a rather evil punishment that uh, black can do. And uh, although the punishment itself is, uh, you know, it's a technique of moderate difficulty, uh, finding and applying it in this situation is not always immediately apparent. So what I see a lot of players do is they'll just play here. And this isn't a terrible move, but white is happy to play here. And, you know, black's wall is thick, but uh, white gets more in the corner than he really should have. White's corner is uh, much bigger than it originally was. So uh, the question is, is there something more severe that uh, we can do as black? Okay, P17 as a starter move. O18, Q18. Mm, too much detail at the beginning. You don't need to do all those uh, uh, moves at the beginning. But uh, the main idea is uh, this is a fine starting point. But uh, okay, what now? Not technically the right sequence, but uh, still a good, uh, good route to look at. What is uh, black to do now? Is black just out of luck? Ah, L17, huh? I see. And now black to play? M15. N15. Some sort of shape making move. I mean, this isn't, you know, terrible for black. In fact, this is, you know, this is okay for black. There's not, it's not like black is horrified to get this result, but this is not the ideal way to make shape as black. This is, uh, you know, this is maybe 8, or 8 out of 10 or 9 out of 10 maybe, but not 10 out of 10. Also, you don't need to do all those forcing moves first. You can just start off with 018. If white really wants to play uh, N18, black is more than happy just to rip the corner back from him. So white will need to respond here, and then black has lost himself a bunch of uh, unnecessary forcing moves. And then this is fine. And then here. But uh, the question is, is L17 really the best we got? Or is there another move that's uh, better? There's a better shape move here. Ah, L18, that's not a bad idea. But... Uh, the problem is it still ends up being a flawed shape. After this, uh, black's shape is still uh, imperfect. Mm, K17. I uh, still see the same problem. White's just going to go here, and black still has imperfect shape. I mean, if black was here later on in the game... There's still a cutting point here, which uh, could become annoying, depending on what's going on on the board. So it's not a perfect wall. Not easy to make uh, some Pomoyo with. Ah, someone said M18, L18. Ah, good job. You found it. So yeah, the key is you have to throw in a third stone. Everyone's used to throwing in two stones to do this technique. But in this particular position, you actually throw in a third stone. Because... That gives you an extra forcing move. And suddenly, black forms a absolutely perfect wall at the cost of three sacrifice stones, which is basically nothing. Not to mention, black has sente, which is really nice. So this is the uh, perfect sequence to play to uh, make yourself shape. So uh, the moral of this story is... Uh, <laughs> That's a fun one. Yeah. No, the moral of this story is uh, even though it may look like moves like uh, N17 end up stealing a few more points than uh, the basic Joseki move like uh, P17, there's a reason why it's not played. And uh, the reason is it leaves nasty weaknesses behind that uh, allow black to build thickness all around. So, uh, yeah, this was just a, a basic intro. 
into a few of the more common testages that uh, you will find, and some that are not that common, but are nevertheless good to know. A lot of them involve the 2-1 point, which has a huge amount of potential, both for messing up uh, liberty counts, for creating codes, for all sorts of different situations. The 2-1 can uh, come in handy. And then we've also shown a lot of uh, placement testages, a lot of uh, sacrifice play testages, and a lot of testages that will uh, occur in many of your corners and your end games. And, uh, you know, most of the techniques themselves just rely on, uh, you know, six or seven basic techniques that are just modified and expanded. You know, either sacrifice two or three stones, either you place a stone inside to destroy shape and then play outside, either you start up a co. I mean, there's only a limited number of techniques. It's just a matter of how you apply them and finding them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't even include the tombstone, did I? Ha! Huh. All right, well, uh, as a final farewell, I will do the tombstone. The tombstone test G. We'll start out with Taisha. So this is just a final uh, test G that's good to know. So this is uh, Taisha, for those of you uh, familiar with such Yoseki. And this is a pretty basic start. And uh, black actually has something of a trick play here with uh, h4, but that, that's not the point. The main point we're looking at is the tombstone test G, and the reason why whites cannot play uh, this f3 sequence. Because even if black gets this technique, uh, black can uh, cut him at g3. And it looks like white gets a great result. But problems for white quickly appear in the liberty department. Suddenly, white shape doesn't look so pretty. And uh, with another test G, actually, oh, this is a reminder to what we did earlier. Black has a test G here that we reviewed earlier to help him win the liberty fight when stones are one spaces apart from an one space apart from one another in a critical liberty fight. What's the move for black to win the liberty fight? Anyone? Yep, D1. That same diagonal. And black wins the liberty fight. And we call this the tombstone test G because white looks like a gigantic tombstone. And is kind of dead. But uh, yeah, we've we shown a few cousins to that test G here. But uh, yeah, going back to the beginning. Uh, so yeah, I uh, hope you all enjoyed this lecture. Uh, it was uh, designed to give a basic primer into a few of the more common test Gs. Hopefully this uh, helped everyone out with uh, their finding of test Gs. And, you know, the best way to uh, practice test G is to look for them in your games. I mean, a lot of times players will just play, you know, the basic move. And a lot of times the basic move is fine. But there are a fair number of situations where if you can find uh, the proper test G, you can vastly shift the result of the game. Whether it's building up uh, a lot more thickness, whether it's stealing 5 or 10 points in the corner whether it's making the best endgame plays, you can uh, substantially change the results of the game by finding just a few testages. So I would uh, highly suggest that everyone here uh, go into your games looking for them. And with that being said, I will uh, sign off and uh, hopefully see you all next week. Thank you all for coming.